we're talking about string crossings today and um, uh, something that happens with string crossings is that sometimes the elbow works extra and I'm just going to show you um, between an, an exaggerated string crossing that I've seen. So I'm going to go between the G string and the D string. Watch my elbow. That's just exhausting how much movement there is. So we're going to talk about how to smallen narrow the movement down, make it smaller. Um, so I want you to put your bow on the G string. Now put your bow on the D string. And everybody can do this. Cello, viola, bass, violin. Back to the G string, D string. Okay, so there's two string levels right now, the G string level and the D string level. To minimize our string crossing movement, we need to think of a third string level. So right between the G and the D string, we're gonna put another string called the GD string. Um, so if we are here on the G string, here's the D string, and now this is the string that's right in the middle. And I'm going to play that, both notes I'm going to play together right now. I want you to try that. Try double stopping your G and your D string right now. Okay, what we want to do is we want to figure out how to play the G string and then the D string with the least movement possible. So you're the G string, D string, G string, D string. If you notice, my elbow hasn't moved. My elbow is still, my elbow is at the G, D string level. And the thing that's moving is my wrist right here. To try this a little I want you to play around with this so get your so get your bow on the level between the G on the 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 level the the string between the G and the D string and I want you to play G don't move your elbow now D don't move your elbow back to G don't move your elbow back to D and play around with that so what's really moving is my fingers and my wrist. Um, so I want you to think of that and play around with that a little today. Now, if we take this and apply it directly to music, look at Little Symphony. And I want all violin players to be looking at the second violin part. Uh, viola's on the viola part, cello's on the cello part, and basses, you don't have much in your part right now, so I want you to look at the cello part as well. And I'm going to play this, and the goal is for me to keep my elbow still and keep that work happening in my hand. So here's 17. Let's see, here we go. <laughs> Next part, we're going between the A string and the D string. So if you've already thought ahead, you're like, well, if there's a level between the G and the D string, there must be a level between the A and the D string, and there is. So here's the A string level, D string level. The A, D string level is right in the middle. And if I start at 21, I keep my bow in the middle of the two strings, and I'm not gonna move my elbow. And then violins we take off into the E string world and we won't bore the other sections with our stuff right now. Um, so what I want you to take away from this is when you're doing string crossings between two strings, don't think string A and string B. Think of that string that goes in the middle and the movement is not in your elbow. You're not flying away. You're not flapping away, but you're using your round fingers and your wrist, maybe like a pencil sharpener motion old school pencil sharpeners. Don't know if they have those anymore. Um, but you're using your fingers and your wrist to go back and forth between the strings. Okay, good luck guys. Um, we'll talk about this more, but little symphony. This is a tricky little spot between 17 and then the measures going forward. Bye.